He commanded the chariot to stand still. See, when you believe God, you're going to command something in your life to change. It may not always be easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy all the time. But that's the second thing. That's the third thing that you got to do. Is you got to press. You have to press. See, the word of God says give, and this will be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down and shaken together and running over. And our topic is stop drinking milk. That is the subject. Stop drinking milk. Stop drinking milk. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Stop drinking milk. Some of you have been drinking milk way too long. And it's time to stop. It's time to stop. It's time to mature. It's time to grow to where you can have some more, something else besides milk. It's time to grow. It's time to move on. Right? So I need you all to stop drinking milk. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, it reads, When I was a child, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away childish things when I became a man. Now I want you to understand, if you stay as a child, if you stay a child, you can't live a full satisfying life just staying a child. Because that's not the way that it was intended for us to be. We move from childhood into adolescence and teenage, to teenagers to, to adults. Right? We don't supposed to just stay a child. We're not just supposed to stay a child. We're supposed to move beyond that into adulthood, if you would. So we just can't stay a child. Just can't stay a child. So if we stay a child, that means that we're not going to get the full benefits of the life that we're supposed to have. Because it says, I speak as a child. I speak as a child. How does children speak? If a child gets upset and, and if a child gets into an argument, it's not going to speak. It's not going to think. A child's probably not going to think first before he speaks whenever he gets into an argument. He's probably not going to think about the consequences of what his words are going to be whenever a child gets into an argument. The child is just going to probably say what he wants to say and how he feels. But we know that that's going to end up getting into trouble. Now imagine... You're an adult now, and you're still operating as a child. They see you in an adult form, but you're operating still as a child. And you go there, and you're speaking to someone, and you're talking to them as a child. You're in an argument, and you're name-calling, and you're blaming, and you're pointing fingers, and you're, and you're saying, you're putting your fingers in your ear and saying, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. And you're doing that as an adult. How do you think that's going to be received? Do you think you're going to get the benefits of an adult? Do you think that things are going to go okay for you? No, they're not going to treat you well. You're not going to be treated like a responsible adult. They're going to realize that, you know what, we can't speak, we can't speak to this gentleman right here. He's uh, just something a little bit wrong with them. We can't talk to them right now because uh, they, can't, they can't comprehend this kind of communication. They can't, they can't get into a, an in-depth conversation. So we're not going to talk with them. Matter of fact, there's just somebody else that we can talk to on your behalf. Because we can't talk to you right now. Because we expect an adult to be able to carry on a reasonable conversation. We expect an adult to not to stick his fingers in his ears whenever something is being said that is unpleasant to them. We don't expect an adult whenever you're speaking to hold your breath until you, until you stop. That's childish. We don't expect an adult, an adult to carry themselves that way. So whenever an adult carries themselves that way, then that means that other adults are going to treat them accordingly. They're not going to talk to them about matters that concern. They're going to look for somebody else to be able to, to represent you. They're not going to talk to you about important things because you can't handle that kind of conversation because you're still a child. So they're not going to talk to you that way. Now, imagine whenever a child, whenever they're trying to express something that's wrong, whenever something's not right with them, 
you're not going to always use the words that you can understand because they're not the most articulate. They're not going to be able to use words you understand. That little baby back there, he's not going to be able to express himself well as somebody who's a lot older than them. They just don't. So that means that you got to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what they're trying to say to you if you figure out what they were trying to say to you. Because that's being a child. So he said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. So that means that we can't continue to speak as a child and think we're going to get the blessings of an adult. We're just not going to be able to do that. I, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. <clears throat> Thoughts. So let's imagine how a child thinks. Just imagine, for example, a child wants to save, a child wants money to be able to buy a new bike. To buy a new bike. And he's, in his mind, he's thinking that, his thinking is that I need to save my money. Everything I get, I need to save. That's what a child probably would be thinking. Everything that I get that I need to save. Even some adults who aren't trained up in, in, in the Word might think that. But we understand that that's not the way we're supposed to think. In Luke 6 and 38. Thank you. Thank you, First Lady. In Luke 6 and 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. So men give unto your bosom. See, it's different. See, it's not like that. You're thinking the more money that I hoard to myself, Everybody here? Get You're thinking the more money that I hoard to myself, the more money that I'm going to have. But that's not always the case. See, when you're talking spiritual, you got to do things different than what the natural is going to do. See, in the natural it is, the more you, the more you put away, the more you save without spending, the more money you're going to have. But see, the word of God says give, and this will be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down and shaken together and running over. That's what the word of God says. You understand me? So we got to get out of that child way of thinking because a child is not going to be able to comprehend that. You understand? A child can't comprehend these kind of, this, uh, these things because they're, they, well, if I give, then I mean I got less money. That's what a child's going to be thinking. But see, when you give to God and you, and you begin to connect to what he spiritually is trying to tell you, See, what, if, you haven't, if you haven't thought about it yet, if you haven't came to that conclusion, I'm drawing, a, I'm drawing a parallel between the natural and the spiritual. Right? And so the thing about it is, is that when you're a child and, and, and you think that way, and when I talk about a child, I'm not just talking just in age. I'm talking about if you haven't matured, if you haven't matured in the level that you should be, right, naturally, and more important, spiritually, more important spiritually, you're not going to be able to understand some of the, the teachings that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. Some of the concepts that we're supposed to go by. You're not going to be able to understand them because you're still thinking in that child. You're still thinking in that child mentality. You've got to come out of that child mentality. So he said, I thought as a child. So a child, things got to seem right to him. A child, whenever he gets in an argument, he gets in an argument with somebody, he might think that, you know what, they're calling me names, so I should call them names too. They're, they did this to me. They, they flattened my tires, so I should go and, I should go and, I should go and throw a rock through their, through their bedroom window. They flattened my tires, so I'm going to throw a rock through their window. So as a child, he's thinking still an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus said something different, right? The Word of God tells us different. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. He's the one that tells us to treat people good, you know, who, who despitefully use us. He's the one that tells us if they take your coat, give them, you know, give them your coat also. Give them something else. Give them, they take, if they take your coat, then give them something else. Give them your cloak. If they ask you to go one mile, go two. See, suppose it's different with the Lord. We're talking about, but see, that's coming from a... Leave me out of that child mentality. And I'm going to tell you one that I had a hard time dealing with. 
One, I had a hard time, so I'm going to be transparent. Can I be transparent? Can I be transparent with you all? I told you all a little bit how I grew up and where I grew up at. Right? A little bit during uh, praise and worship and testimony service. But the thing about it is, and what I want you to understand is this. What I had a hard time dealing with and understanding and coming to the conclusion was, if somebody smite thee on thy one cheek, turn the other cheek. I had a hard time understanding that. I had a hard time dealing with that. Saying that I just got to take, I just got to take it. I had a hard time dealing with that because, you know, it didn't seem right. I didn't grow up in the church. It didn't seem right. Somebody smite, you know, uh, smite thee on one cheek, turn the other cheek. You know, and, and, and I believe, and what I understand that is, is, is you know, we got to look at it. You can look at it literally turn the other cheek, or you can look at it saying you're supposed to forgive. You're not supposed to do anything about that. You understand me? I don't think you just go ahead and just say, okay, hit me on this one. You know, you're supposed to go ahead and, and back away from it. I had a hard time dealing with that. I would have, I like, you know what, uh, I just can't let somebody just come up on me and just do what they want to do. I just, I, you know, I mean, I, you, know, I, you know, all the other stuff, okay, you know what I mean? You know, come and pray and do this and do that, okay, all right, that's cool. But I just can't let somebody just come bum rush up on me, and, you know, and just let somebody do what they want to do. I just can't do that. But see, it takes trust in the Lord. See, that's what it says when I was a child, I thought as a child. It takes trust in the Lord. If you're God, he's not going to let somebody just come and just do what they want to do to you. Unless it's for some good reason. Unless he's trying to take you to another level in him. And then that means that if you stop that, then you stopped your growth in him anyway. You stopped your growth in him. So he's not going to allow that to happen. So what we have to understand is when we, we got to learn how to think as a man. And when I say as a man, I want you to draw the parallel. We got to get more spiritual in our thinking. More spiritual. So we got to say, you know what? If I do forget about it, if I do forget it, God got my back. God sees. He said, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against thee, thou shalt condemn. He's not going to let anything happen to you if you're his, if you're his chosen. And if he does allow something to happen, it's for your good. It's going to help shape you and mold you and develop you into the person that he's trying to get you to be. So, but that's beginning to learn how to think as a man, learning how to be more spiritual in your thinking. That's what that comes down to. So that's what we got to understand. We got to understand that. So if you want to, so in other words, we got to develop, we got to become more, we got to become more of a man in our thinking. We got to become more mature in our thinking. We got to be more mature in our speaking. We got to be more, more mature in everything that we do. We can't stay a child. If you're, I'm going to tell you this truly. If you're in Christ and you are in the same way you were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and you're in the same position, you're not growing. You're not growing, and that's probably why you're not getting blessed the way that you should be getting blessed, the way that you think you should be getting blessed. Because that means that you're esteeming everything else. Besides God, that means you're putting in more time in everything else besides God. That means that you're putting more time in the school besides God. You're putting more time in the work besides God. You're putting more work. You're putting more time and work in your relationship besides developing your relationship with God. And that's probably why you're not getting blessed the way that you should. If you're still in the same way that you were, if you haven't matured in God from last year to this year to if you haven't matured. From the time you start serving God and you haven't been matured, it's because you're not putting the time in that you should with God. And that's just plain and simple. You're esteeming everything else. And you're realizing, and that's that child's way of thinking. Like I said, whenever he wanted to save money, he thought, you know what, I can't give because if I give, I got less. So you're not developing into that mature spiritual way of thinking. You have, you have to develop into that. Just like whenever Jesus went, whenever Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and he was asking, he said, you know, he was asking, he said, Rabbi, we know that, you know, thou must be, y'all must be a teacher that comes from God because no man can do these miracles except thou be with them. So God be with them. And Jesus said, and he told him, he said, you must be born again. Right? We know he told me, he said, you must be born again. But what did Nicodemus, what went on with Nicodemus? Nicodemus didn't understand him.